Let's put our hands together. God is so good. And guys, thank you for reminding us of how God is so good. He's, he's been so good to me. Turn around and look. I love doing this when we come out here. Just take a few seconds, okay? I'm just going to interrupt this moment just for a few seconds. Just turn around and look. Look at all the surfers and catching waves. Surfs up. Look at the water, the sun, the white sand. I don't know about you guys, but I live here. <laughs> I live here. And just like you can live here and not go to the beach, you can live here in the Gulf Coast and be so close to such beauty, but not take advantage of it. The same thing is true that we could be so close to the, the goodness of God, take it for granted, forget to tell them. I love this moment, guys, and I appreciate y'all so much. I love, love you guys, and I want to say thank you to every volunteer that, that came out this morning and set this up. Man, we got hot coffee, right? Like, come on, we got a place for you to get connected. We got a QR code right here down front you can follow. There's some things that you're going to need to know, so take a picture. If you don't know how to do this, go to your camera. Take a little picture. It'll send you to a link. And I just want to keep you up to date, keep you in the know. But uh, God is so good to us. He's been so good. And I believe this message, I believe this moment, I believe it matters. I'm so glad that you came out today. And for everybody watching online, we want to welcome you guys and to our campus at Blackwater. I want to welcome you guys also. Would you, uh, would you take, would you just take a few seconds to turn around and just say hello to someone real quick? Would you do that? Give somebody, dab them up, give someone a fist, a high five. Yes. Good stuff, good stuff. All right, you guys can be seated. You guys, please be seated. You know, there's some things that we do together as a church that you can't do by yourself. How many know what I'm talking about? You ever been on a team before? You understand that, like, you can make a play, but it takes a team to win a championship. Y'all with me? Like, you can make a play, you can, uh, I see you, Jason, wearing the Michigan colors. I see you, sir, still undefeated. I see you. So, <laughs> uh, so, so, so it takes a team. It takes a team. Can I tell you something? It takes a church. It takes other brothers and sisters in Christ to be there. In fact, Scripture would remind us, hey, don't, don't, don't neglect coming together. Because something special happens when you come together. Your faith is lifted, right? If the word of God is preached, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. I'm going to preach the word today. But we already heard the word. We already got to worship. And so you can sing by yourself. But how many sound better with a band? How many sound better with a band? You know what I'm talking about? Like there's the shower singing and there's in the car singing. But when you get the band, you just sound better. Like they don't even know. They, they don't even know how much better you sound with a band. And that's not because we can't hear you. For some of us. Speaking prophetically. No, no. Well, the same thing is true with the church is that, guys, there are times in our life when the enemy is going to come at us and where things aren't going to work out. And the enemy wants you isolated. So if you get isolated, then the enemy knows he he can get you weak. He can get you weaker. And then when you're really weak, he can attack you. And most of the time, he can overtake you. But there's something that happens when we come together as a church. And, and, and we begin to sing. And we begin to lift our voices up to God. What, what, there, there's something special that happens. In fact, Scripture says that angels want to look into those kind of things. 
Uh, a- angels watch us worship. Did you know that? They watch us worship. And, and we've not seen God. They have. But they watch us worship. There, there's something that when we open the word together and we, we read this together, and then there's something when we're, when we're real with each other. We're like, hey, pray for me here. I'm struggling. Anybody struggling? Anybody, anybody struggling? Can, can we just be honest? No one here but us, and we're all for each other, right? Raise your hand if you're struggling a little bit. Look, now, turn, keep it up. Keep it high. Turn, turn around and look. Turn around and look. You thought you were the only one. You thought that you're the only one. You're not. And so when we come together, something happens where our faith gets stronger. There's something about togetherness. It's why the devil always comes, always wants to divide. It's why the enemy always is about division. That's his strategy. He doesn't have a new strategy. He just has a really, really good strategy. And the strategy is to divide. The strategy is disunity. It can happen in your home. It can happen in your marriage. It can happen with your kids. It can happen in your ministry. It can happen in your business. It can happen in your family. It can happen with friends. And that's that. And you know it. And, and the enemy knows it. And that that's that's what the enemy wants to do. The enemy is all about division. And so days like today are so special for me. I hope they are for you. But when we get to come together and we come to the beach and ladies, you get to put on your boots and, you know, we, uh, you know, we get to put on, man, you know, we live in Florida. We don't get to do this most of the year. You with me? I, I like a little chill. Anybody here like a little chill? Anybody say absolutely not. Absolutely not. I see you. You're bundled from head to toe. I get you. I get you. But for me, man, I love it when our campuses, when we get to come together and we get to lift our voices together. And I, I've never seen a church with a prettier back, backdrop than right here at the beach. And so today's special. It's special for a couple reasons. One, God is here. And if you're here today, God is here today. And I, I, I know our prayer would be that, that your faith would actually intersect his faithfulness and you would experience the goodness of God that would be our prayer today I want to bring a message out of the Old Testament that I think is incredibly relevant to us today because the truth is for some of us as we look back on 2023 it's over and some of us are like thank God it's over hello new right but if we don't change a few things We might be exiting 24 the way we exited 23. How many want to exit 24 a little differently? Right now, now I'm, these aren't the people that had just the worst year ever. These are the people that believe what they sing, that that he takes us from glory to glory. That, yeah, this year may have been amazing. I may have had the best year for my business. I mean, this man, I'm telling you, we we may have had the best, best year financially. We may have had the best year relationally. We may have had the best year. Maybe you got married. You got married this year. Do you know what? God can take you from glory to glory. He'd take us higher and higher and higher. And so so there's something about declaring. There's something about believing. There's something about saying, okay, God. Okay, God. And I I pray that that is what happens today. Here's what I know. Some of us need some miracles. Raise your hand if you need a miracle. Raise it up. It's a lot of hands. I got good news for y'all today. He still does miracles. God is still in the miracles. God isn't like, oh, I can't do that. That was Old Testament. I can't do that. That was New Testament. I can't do that. This is 2024. Have you watched the news? I can't do that. This is too, no, no. God's, God's, no, God's free to do a miracle whenever, however, wherever, for whoever he wants. He's still in the miracle business. We have something special coming up as a church, and man, we just uh, went from something from glory to glory. We just came from passion, took 64 to passion, 55,000, 55,000 people filling up Mercedes Benz, and our young adults went, and to every leader, every student that's here that went, I just, I know you're just overflowing. God did so much, but it doesn't have to just be like, yeah, I can't wait till next year, because it's, 
it's that was awesome and and it doesn't get any better than that and I can't wait until next year. No, no, no. We got a whole year in front of us. Some things only come by prayer and fasting. And if you need a miracle, if you need a breakthrough, if you need an answered prayer, if you need God to disrupt the disruption in your life, then some things only happen when we push in with prayer. Some things only happen when we push in with fasting. Every year, every year we do a a fast. We do what's called a corporate fast. As a church, we invite people to set aside the first of your year because the first belongs to God. And 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 God God receives the first. He doesn't like seconds. He receives the first and he blesses the rest. So for me, for the past, I don't know, maybe 14 years, I've been fasting, maybe, I don't know, 14, 15 years, been fasting at the beginning of the year to say, God, I, I, I want I want less of me. But actually, it doesn't start there. It's more like this. It's like, God, I want more of you. And God's like, you want more of me? Yeah, I want more of you, God. You really want more of me? Yeah, God, I really want more of you. Okay, well, guess what, Tim? What, what God, tell me. What, because I want more of you, God. Oh, I want to see your glory. Oh, Jesus, I want more of you. And he's like, you really want? Okay, empty yourself out. Dump yourself out. Because I, I can't fill something that's full. So if you want more of me, there's got to be less of you. Oh, well. I'll get back with you, God. <laughs> you just, just stay right there. Let me think about this. Let me pray about it. But what fasting does is, is fasting gets my heart in alignment with God's heart. And so this church was birthed out of fasting. I picked up a book called, anyone want to guess it? Fasting <laughs> by Jensen Franklin. I picked up that book. I started reading it, and it changed my life. And we're here today. Every assignment has a birthplace, Jensen Franklin said. Every assignment has a birthplace. Like there's a moment when God will do something so big that it's not just a moment. It ends up being a great memory. It leads to greater memories. It leads to greater glory where you look back and you're like, oh, God, thank you so much. And the truth is that 2024, we got this new year, and, and it, it's, it's, it's a great opportunity. And the truth is, man, we got um, – it's unblemished. It's unmarked for most of us. It's a it's a new blank page. There's, there's so much that can happen as we're new, new, new. It, it is incredible. But for some of us, it's uncertain. For some of us, we're we have fear right now because of the level of uncertainty because of what's new. And so what I want to tell you is there's nothing you could do greater than pray. And there's nothing that's more powerful than when you combine the two prayer and fasting. And so I'm going to actually do a, a series called Triple Crown. We're going to crank that up in a few weeks. And I'm going to teach on fasting. I'm going to teach on prayer. I'm going to teach on the triple braided cord that the Bible speaks about. That when you do these three, three things in your life, there's nothing, nothing that can break it. It holds. How many would be interested in that? I'm talking about power in your life. Right. I'm talking about not I'm talking about real spiritual power. How many want real spiritual power this year? You want to know that you have influence in the heavens. You want to know that when you pray, he hears when you pray, he answers. How many are hungry for that? So I want to invite you right before I read this text. I want to invite you. We're going to start tomorrow, tomorrow. Now, there's all kinds of different fasts, and I don't have time to go through that now. But fasting, biblical, biblical fasting is when you just give up some type of food. We're going to do it for 21 days. If this is your first fast, I wouldn't do it for 21 days. I'd be like saying, I think I'm going to run the double bridge run. I'm going to do it. And the day before you run 20 miles. <laughs> Ain't going to happen. Right? So you, just, you work up to it. For some of you guys, a one day fast. For some of you guys, a three-day fast. And we're not here to tell you what to do or what to fast from. Or That's between you and God. You know your level of brokenness. You know your level of neediness. And watch this. you got to want it. Right? How many times does Jesus say, what do you want me to do for you? <laughs> well, I'm blind. Let's start there. Right? Jesus said, do you really want to be healed? Some people don't want to be healed. They just want to keep complaining. Some people, some people do want to be healed. 
healed. And that's why they keep praying and believing in the middle of their pain, in the middle of the fire that they realize that God, God, hey, God hasn't delivered me, delivered me from this. But God actually has met me in the middle of this. You with me? And so I just want to challenge you. This changed my life, guys. This changed my life. It's a, it's a lifestyle now. It's not something I do once a year. It's a lifestyle. And I thank God. The, the blessings in my life are all because of God, G-O-D. But I believe when we fast, I believe there's a different level of blessing, a different level of favor, a different level of anointing, a different level of power, a different level of breakthrough that happens in us so it can happen through us. And uh, God wants to use you. God wants to use you so his love and mercy can flow through you. Broken people from all of us to other broken people. And uh, that's just the truth. And, and so our story has everything to do. You can go to our website, MomentumChurch.org. There's fasting resources there. You can see it on our app. And um, do this fast with us. Starting tomorrow, for however long you sense the Lord. And what's going to happen is the last day of the corporate fast, and you could do an individual fast, whatever. Um, by the way, when you fast, you lose weight. I found that out. Um, when you fast, when you fast, you actually get healthier. When you fast, your body begins to fight the cancer cells within you. You begin to heal at a cellular level. When you fast, you look younger. Am I talking to anybody? Like, like, like it is the fountain of youth. So I may be going past 21 days. We'll see here. Um, but great benefits into fasting. But we're going to end this fast with a celebration. We do it every year. We've done it for 12 years fasting together. But we're going to finish this fast with a night of worship. A night of worship. Now I want you to be there. I want you to be there. We're going to actually be in a different location. You know, it's, it's, it's kind of cool because as long as I'm flexible, God can use me. But the day I stop being flexible and it becomes about me, what I want, me, 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 my, 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 this, 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 I, 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 God's like, forget you, right? He can't use that. And so one of the ways that God's working in my life is like moving us around different places. You know, we bought property. I'm meeting with a banker this week. We're going to take a loan. We're going to build on that property. I'm still believing God. We're going to pay that thing off fast. I'm believing God for property. There's a place in Pensacola I'm believing God for right now. And, um. But but like Pensacola, we were in PLT and and now we don't know where we're going to be next week. We actually have a place. We're waiting on a place, but we don't have the final confirmation. And I'm like, Lord, you know what today is, right? Today, Sunday. I'm supposed to get up and tell everyone, meet us next Sunday, Pensacola at MB Cook right there in East Hill. But I, I, I can't say that just yet. So there are some things in my life that is good. It's good that I have uncertainty because God knows if there's uncertainty, God knows that he's got a better chance that I'll be praying. I fight best on my knees. I'm taller than 5'8". It was a half, might be a quarter, we're not sure. I'm taller on my knees, so are you. You with me? And so we're going to end this thing with a night of worship. It's going to be awesome. And here's what I believe is going to happen. If you will fast, I want to encourage you, get your phones and make a little list of things that you need God to move in. And then God may answer some of those things in the fast. He's done that for me. God has never answered all of the things in the fast. But it's interesting how many things within the year God answers. And I look back at the end of the year and I'm like, God, tears, because he's been so good. You with me? God's been so good. So I want to challenge you. Whether it's your first fast and you're like, man, I'm going to run a block. That's big. That's real big. Because you can't finish what you haven't started. So it's better to get started today. For some of you, you're going to go 21 days. You do it every year and you're hungry and you're excited and you're ready. You're hungry for God and you're like, I need God to move here. I need God to move here. I need God to do this. Well, that night, man, we're going to give God the glory and the praise because God is going to do so many things in your life that we're going to have a lot to thank him for. I want to read just a few verses today. And I want to start with Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 10 says, Using a dull axe requires great strength. 
I wonder how many of us were, were using a dull axe in 2023. You know, we were so busy. We were doing so much that we just forgot to take the time to sharpen the axe. It may be your health where you're like so concerned and so focused on great things, but you forgot about yourself. You didn't take care of yourself. It, it's, it's the whole thing. Put on your mask first before you put on the person next to you. It's that principle. I wonder, I wonder how many people are here, and the truth is, like, prayer to you is something you know about. You God's answered prayers before. It's just something right now that you're really not doing because you're discouraged. Because somewhere along the way, you did pray, and God didn't how you thought he would. And so you just kind of was like, you know what, I'm just not going to, I'm just not going to pray anymore. Like God knows, just whatever. And, and the devil's kind of got you in that complacent state where he doesn't fear you because he knows you're not plugging up, you're not charging up, you're not connected to the real power source. And so he's got you right where he wants you. And he doesn't care if you go to church. He doesn't care if you go to church. He, he's afraid of you when you pray. And so for some of us, it, it may be a bad attitude, an attitude that, man, our attitude was here, and then life circumstances led us here, and the truth is, like, our attitude determines our altitude, and the truth is we all know the times and the moments when we're flying low, too low, when we're low on fuel, because our attitude is low, and, and we're just, we're not, and so every new year is great, and goals, and ambitions, and dreams, and man, we got New Year's resolutions, and I want to be a better me, and all this kind of stuff. But I got something better than all of that. I've got an open door. God's got open doors in 2024. And, and if you say that's right, if you say amen, you got to understand that something just shifted for you. Not for other people that just sat there and was like. But something happens when you sign a contract. It becomes personal. So when you say that's right, when you say amen, when you say, oh, Lord Jesus, when you say something like that, what you're saying is, I believe. God is looking for people that believe. This whole thing is about belief. At the end of the day, there will be a division between people that believed and people that didn't believe. But just like between people who believed and put their faith in Christ and people didn't believe, didn't put their faith in Christ, there will be a division between people that make it to heaven that they believed and they ran their race and they were just thankful for amazing grace because they showed up. But the other people, they finished running. Are you with me? So the story that I'm going to tell in just a minute has everything to do with this verse. Using a dull axe requires great strength, so sharpen the blade. Turn to your neighbor and say, sharpen the blade. Hey, hey, ask him a question. Say, is your, ask him this question. How sharp are you? Look, look at him one more time and say, I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. You ever got around somebody that was so sharp? You were around them and you're like, oh my goodness, that person has it. They got it, and I want it. They have it, and I need it. I lost it. I'm looking for it. I found it. Thank God for it. It. They got it. They're sharp. There, there's something between sharp and dull. Right? There, there's one thing going into a restaurant waiting for 15 minutes, and no one even recognizes you, but there's a sign that says, please wait to be seated. And driving through Chick-fil-A, drive through That's I'm just saying like that. Whereas, my pleasure. There, there's a difference between pulling up being like, hello, anybody there? Waiting five minutes, anybody there? And then all of a sudden, sorry about your wait. What do you want? <laughs> that ain't cool, man. I'm like, I don't trust you to make my food. I might be in a hurry, but I ain't that much of a hurry. I feel a biblical fast coming on. Go to global later. Y'all with me? Tell that person, sharpen your axe. Tell them, sharpen your edge. 
See, you, you, you got you to gotta do it. Now, let me, let, me, let me show you something real quick. I'm going to tell you a real quick story. By the way, Ecclesiastes 10.10 10 says, Using a dull axe requires great strength, so sharpen the blade. That's the value of wisdom. It helps you succeed. How many want to be more successful this year than last year? How many want to be? It's not a trick question. If your hand's not in the air, I'll pray for you later. Just meet with me. How many know that God wants you to be successful? Do you know that? God does. He's not against you. He's for you. He's got great plans for you, in fact, but success is tied to his word because his word represents his power. His word is the extension cord to his person. Are you with me? Jesus is the word. So, so there's something about getting in God's word, and this says, hey, listen, a, a wise person will sharpen that axe. Another person will just keep swinging. Here's what I know. you got to keep swinging, but it's a lot easier when the edge is sharp. You ever, you ever shaved? You ever shaved? Ladies, maybe you're shaving your legs and you're like, oh, that's a bad blade. I don't got time for bad blades. I don't got time for dullness. God has things for you this year that if you will press into him, if you will press into God, God will show you great and mighty things you don't understand. By the way, in scripture, when it talks about being blessed, it's talking about God prospering you. God wants to prosper you. I'm going to show you what his power can do. We go to this scripture. It's found in 2 Kings. It's one of the coolest stories. It's been a minute since I preached it, and I was like, this is a good message for day one. 2 Kings 6, 1 through 7. And I'm just going to read these verses. One day, a group of prophets, they came to Elisha. Elijah and Elisha, don't get them confused. Elijah was the first one. Elisha was the second one. There was Elijah. Someone say Elisha. Elisha served Elijah. He burned the plow. He followed Elijah, and he was like, I want to serve you. I want to help you because there's anointing on your life. And God has spoken to me, and like a magnet, I am attracted to you. God will put people in your life that have spiritual depth, that have roots, that have power, that when they pray, they're not worried about what other people are thinking because of their prayer. When they pray, they only are worried about what heaven is thinking because they're not praying to everybody. They're praying to the one, the only one, the eternal one. They're praying to that one. And so when they sing, they don't care about what people think. They're not trying to be quiet. They're not, they're not trying to, hey, everyone, look at me. But when they sing, they realize that they're singing to the king. It's, it's an audience of one. They're those kind of people that, that, that God will, will put in your life, you're going to need people like that. It's why groups are important. It's why coming to church is important. It's why our young adults getting together and opening God's word and learning God's word. And they say, well, that will help me relationally. That that will help me professionally. It matters. Elisha realized that God's hand was on Elijah. The anointing. Listen, I'm going to teach you something. The anointing of God is available for Christians, but you got to get under his authority. Obedience is the entry fee. You, you got to come under authority. So, so when the anointing of God is on your life, the power flows. The power flows. The miraculous flows. Do you understand what I'm saying? You, you, you begin to have the power to say, you know what? I, I'm, I'm connected to God. I'm in his word. I am prayed up. I'm living for Jesus. And you know what? I'm going to speak life and I'm going to stay there. And I'm going to declare great things for my family, great things for my business, great things for my coworkers, great things for my health, great things for my finances, great things. And all of a sudden I begin to overflow. And now people around me are wanting what I got. And I don't just have to say, well, it's actually, you know, that's eight dollar drink at Starbucks. It's caffeine. It's, it's great. You got to try it. It's, it'll wake you up. No, no, there's a bigger, better source in me. You with me? And, and, and you don't get the anointing. Just by being around people with anointing, you don't get the anointing of people you're around. My mentors teach me you get the anointing of who you're under. It flows down. And watch this play out in these verses. Watch this. One day, a group of prophets came to Elisha, and they told him, as you can see, this place where 
where we are meeting is too small. Now, I like this because there's vision in that statement. They could just stay there. They could not be worried about growth. They could just be complacent. They could just settle. They could just maintain. But all of a sudden, there was a holy discontent. And they're like, oh, this ain't going to work anymore. This was what we prayed for back then. But we ain't back then anymore. We're actually here now. And this ain't going to hold us. It could hold us back there. Back there, it looked massive. But, but God has brought us from glory to glory. God has done great things in our lives. God has expanded our business. We used to have, we used to have this over here. But, and then we opened up another place over here. And then we... But that's that's not enough. It's too small. Tell the person you sit next to it's too small. It's too small. You got to think bigger. You got to believe bigger. You got to pray bigger. You got to dream bigger. If you don't, you will live your life. You will look back filled with regrets and wonder what could have been. What should have been. But the day that you realize, wait a second, God can do more than this. God can do more than that. Thank God for that. I'm going to give God the glory for that. But God's not finished yet. God's not. The fact that you're breathing air, God isn't finished yet. The fact you're still alive today, God's not finished with you yet. The fact that you can lift your voice and praise him and worship him. You, God's not done with you yet. God brought you too far for you just to be settled with something too, too small, too insignificant. Yeah, my kids are good kids. Are your kids godly kids? There's a difference. Of, yeah, they, they didn't get thrown in jail, and they love Jesus. You with me? I'm feeling the flow right now. I'm feeling the flow. So Elisha, I, I would just believe he smiles. They say, as you see where we're at, it's too small. Let's go down to the Jordan River. Now, I've been to the Jordan River. The Jordan River is dirty. It's, it's not beautiful. You're in Portofino looking out at the water. You're like, oh, look at the beautiful. No, no, this not. In fact, the Jordan River was not impressive when I went there. It's impressive because who was there, who got baptized, but it wasn't impressive looking at it. In fact, there are places the Jordan River isn't any bigger than this path. But he said, let's go down to the Jordan River, right? And, and there are plenty of logs there. There we can build a new place for us to meet. Oh, I like the word new. Someone say new. We need a new place. Someone say new place. And we need a new place for us to meet. I was like, Jesus, that's right where I'm at right now. I need a new place for us to meet in Pensacola. You know what the Lord put in my heart? Go start walking around this place that isn't even for sale yet. You've done it before. Start doing it again. Start declaring that wherever your feet touch, that God will bless you and give it to you. We need it. And he promised supply my needs. I wonder how many times God's just like, I got it for you, but you don't want it, so I'm not going to give it. You know, sometimes, my God, I feel him right now. You know, sometimes as a parent, there's advice that your kids need, that they really need, but they ain't. They're not in a place to receive it. And the moment you open your mouth, you're wasting your breath. Because you're going to be laying gold, you're going to be dropping dimes, but they're not going to hear it because you're the parent. You with me? Now, my kids haven't done anything recently that would put me in a position to talk about this personally. But, but I know being a parent, and then I also know being a son. How many of you are there, too? Amen. Mom and dad be like, it's cold outside. Get that coat. Man, I'm good. I got a muscle shirt. <laughs> Your girlfriend walk in and say, hey, champ, I see them guns, but it's cold. You better grab a coat, and you just get the biggest, baddest winter coat that you got. <laughs> Mom and dad went, shoo. Your friend say something like, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to get a new place. God's like, believe me for it, Tim. I wonder what God's pushing you to believe. I wonder what God's inviting you to believe for. We're singing this song, God, we believe you for it. I wonder what God is saying, man, I've got great things for you in store. Will you believe it? In other words, will you receive it? Here's the story. We can build a new place for us to meet. All right, he told him, go ahead. Go ahead, go do it. And then they said, please come with us, someone suggested. And he said, okay, I will, I will come. By the way, Jesus makes the journey better. Sometimes we just want to get going on the journey so bad that if we're not careful, like we left without him. 
trying to get to the destination, but we realize what's greater than the destination is taking the journey with Jesus. You can learn some things with Jesus. He goes with them. When they arrived at the Jordan, they began cutting down trees. But as soon as them, but as soon, let me try it like this, English. But as one of them, <laughs> they say if you laughed at yourself, you never get bored. <laughs> but as one of them began cutting down trees, a tree, his axe head fell into the river. Oh, sir. This is Second Kings chapter 6, 1 through 7. He cried out, oh, sir. He cried, it was a borrowed axe. Where did it fall? There are some questions that you need to ask yourself, that you need to be honest with yourself so that you can actually get to the new place. Where did it fall? See, some of us don't want to talk about where we lost it. I won't go there. That's painful. I, I don't want to talk about the moment that the dominoes started falling. Just like every spiritual thing has a birthing, every assignment has a birthing place. So I believe that the devil knows if he can get one domino to fall. His goal is not just to get one to fall. He's coming to still kill and destroy. He's taking out at least three dominoes. You with me? There's there's some questions. Maybe there's some questions you need to ask the people. Don't go to Facebook. But maybe the people, real small group that you, that love you, and you say, hey, I've I got a real hard question. Maybe hard truth to hear, but I'm here to hear it because I don't want 24 looking like 23 did. There's some things I need to change, some things I need to work on. But you got to be honest. Tell your neighbor you got to be honest. I think this is a thing, y'all. Listen, I got like five minutes left. Listen to me. I think this is a thing, y'all. I think we forgot like we're supposed to be honest. I think we forgot when the Ten Commandments is like, don't lie. Thou shalt not lie. It wasn't a suggestion. It wasn't a, it wasn't a suggestion. It was a command. Don't lie. And there's no such thing as a little small lie. There's no such thing as a little white lie. There's no thing as, man, I know, but in the end, it's all going to work out. Like this is, you know, you know, no, 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 no. We did tell the truth. And, and sometimes the hardest truth to tell is on your. S you know, the hardest thing, the easiest to thing is to see what's wrong in them. I got you figured out. You're number three on, or number five or number seven on the Enneagram. Like this is also this over here. And you got this and your personality and Lord knows you. Maybe a little pinch of narcissism in there somewhere. <laughs> oh, Jesus, we're going to pray for you. I got, I got you dialed up, girl. I'm watching you. <laughs> I know about you. I'm keeping my eye on you. I, 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 mm -hmm. <laughs> am, I, am I telling the truth? Y'all got four more minutes? You got four minutes? You got to be honest. The hardest person to be honest with is yourself. It's yourself. Got to look in that mirror and get real. Some of us need to heal mentally. Some of us need to heal emotionally. Some of us need to heal spiritually. Some of us need to heal sexually. Some of us need to heal relationally. There are major things where we need to heal in our life, but you cannot heal what you don't reveal. Denial is a really bad trial. It ain't going to work out for you. This joker, as soon as he loses it, he cries out, and he, he calls his own foul. You ever played basketball before? You know, most people don't call their own fouls. You're like, you fouled me. They're like, I didn't touch you. You're like, let me show you. <laughs> your, your finger, it pressed on my arm. You, you got me. Now, I don't know what you're talking about. That wasn't me. You were over there on the layup, and I was over here. No, 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 no. Call your own foul. He called his own foul. He said, I lost it. And I wonder today, real quick, I wonder how many of you, you feel like, honestly, you've lost it. And you're not really excited about it, 2024, because you're still hanging around, stuck in, in the ditch of 2023. And the truth is, all you got to do is be honest where you lost it. And that's right where you actually find it. That's how God works. 
In fact, some of some some of us have learned that before where maybe you moved here and you moved there and then you moved here. Or maybe you left a church here and then you went to that church. and It's like that church is so bad, but I'm at this church now. Oh, man, pray the Lord. We did everything good. And you show up at that church, but you're only there for a minute because it's not the church. It's you. It's you. You didn't get the memo. You, you skipped over the email. Now, I'm just being honest. I'm not trying to be ugly. I'm just being honest. We've all been there before. But not only is it you where the problem is, but I'm coming to tell you today there's some hope. It's you that God is wanting to change your situation. He's wanting to change your destination. He's wanting to change where you're wrestling, where you're struggling, where you've been failing. God is like, yeah, I can do something about your problem, but first you got to cry out. Look at the story. He cries out. Here's the rest of of the story. He says, uh, it was borrowed. I, I, I got to get it back. He said, where did it fall? The man of God asked. When he showed him the place, Elisha cut, watch this, a stick, and he threw it into the water at that spot. Elisha, man of God, anointing, power, favor in the heavens. He cuts a little stick. Now, this guy was swinging a stick, but it was a bigger stick. It, it was an axe, and there was the handle, and there was the head. And he was swinging the handle connected to the head, but he lost the head. So when he lost the head, he lost his effectiveness. He lost the sharpness. He lost the edge. And so if he's going to hit, if he's going to take this handle and try to hit a tree with what used to be a tree, nothing's going to happen. And I wonder how many times we don't have the power of God, but we're trying to do the things of God, but there's no power. It just looks like a place that has power, but there's actually no fire in the fireplace. Because we lost the edge. We lost the power. See, the handle represents us. We've got to swing. We've got to do the work. We've got to show up at our job. We've got to be the best we can be. We've got to make the phone calls. We've got to have the presentations. We've got to chop wood. The handle represents us, but the head represents the power of Almighty God. And it's crazy to try to do God's work without God's power. Even in your own life, even in your own marriage, even in your own parenting, even in your own business, even in your own neighborhood, even in your own relationships, it's crazy to try to think you're going to build something without realizing what is actually making it happen. The amazing part of this story is once he threw a little stick in there to the spot in the water, all of a sudden the heavy chunk of metal, the axe head, floated, floated to the top. And Elisha said, grab it. And the man reached out and grabbed. And the last word of this story is it. It. He lost it. He confessed it. He cried about it. I mean, when, when, was, when was the last time that, that the brokenness that you're facing and the situation that seems to have embraced you, constrained you, when was the last time you cried about it? When was the last time you went and got someone to say, hey, I need, would you help me with it? Because I'm struggling with it. I, I thought I had it, and I think I had it, but I'm pretty sure I don't have it because I think I lost it, and I, I'm not sure how to get it back. I, I don't see it. I, I don't know where it is, but I know I know where, where two gather together, there's something powerful. When I get another Christian brother, I get another Christian sister together, and when I confess my faults before men, I can get healed. So I lost it. It's in there somewhere. I don't know exactly where it is, but I saw it go off. And I ain't stupid. Mama didn't raise no fool. I'm going to keep trying to do work. I'm going to keep trying to get big results that we need. Because that's too small without confessing. I don't, I, I don't have what I need. And then the man of God puts the stick in the water. And it floats right up to the top. And the man of God, Elisha, says, is that it? And he's like, that's it. He's like, grab it. Yes, sir, I'll grab it. And he grabs it. Grab it. Grab it. For some of us, it's an action step. You're not waiting on God. God's waiting on you. Listen to me. Listen to me. I'm feeling the Holy Spirit speaking through me right now. For some of you, you're not waiting on God. God's waiting on you. I'm going to say it again. I'm going to say it again. For some of us, we think we're waiting on God. We ain't waiting on God. God's waiting on us. You grab it. See, there's things that God can do. It's called miracles. 
But then God can make the, the, the axe head float. But I got to reach out and take it. I got to reach out and get it. I can't just pray about it and confess it. I, I, I noticed the story didn't happen where it floated to the top and then all of a sudden it went whoop right back to the handle. And he's like, wow. No, the man of God said, that's what God can do. Now you got to grab it. Now you got to do something about it. Now you got to put it back together. You got to get it together. Grab it. For some of y'all, that's, that's what God's speaking today. For others, you got to confess it. Until you confess it, you're never going to be able to take it. It's a new year. We want a new us. Sometimes it's got to start with us. So it can affect everybody else. I wonder today, it's 11-11. What a perfect time. I wonder today how many would say I've lost it. In my life, there's some things right now where I've lost it, maybe spiritually. Maybe just like, man, I, I was being a great dad. I was showing up. I was present. And then you know what? I checked out or burn out or, man, just something took me out or whatever. And, and uh, man, may, maybe it's not even that. Maybe it's over here. And, man, you used to be a prayer warrior. And now it's like you're even struggling to pray because you just lost it. And you know that. Or maybe it's over here. Like you were satisfied. You were satisfied with where you're at. And God's calling you to greater. God's like, there's more in you. There's more in you. There's more in you. And God's like, man, I want to do more through you because there's more in you, but 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 you gotta want it. You gotta you gotta grab it. I don't know who it is today, but I truly believe this year can be the best year of your life. But for some of us, we gotta go back to go forward. We go back to where we lost it so we can retrieve it, so we can grab it, so God can do it. God won't do for you what you can do for yourself. It's not a Bible verse. It's just good sense. God will do for you what you cannot do. But oftentimes God does not do for you and I what we need to do for ourselves. You with me? I just wonder today, with great humility comes great. With great humility comes great power. I wonder if there's anyone here today to say, I'll just be honest. I lost it. And you know what it means. We don't. None of us do. Maybe your spouse does, maybe your spouse doesn't. But you say, man, I, I just, I'm going to mark this day right here, day one. Say, I, I lost it, and I need it. And I'm willing to grab it, but I need God to do it. Show me it. If that's you, I'm going to ask you to raise your hand. There's already a hand in there. God bless you. I see you, man. There's someone that was already honest. And guys, there are hands all over. And I've been there before. And all you got to do is live to be there. You just got to have a couple days under your belt to get there. It's no, no condemnation. You just don't want to stay there. I'm going to pray for you and we're done. Jesus, I thank you for my, my church fam, God. I thank you, Lord, for the family of God. I thank you for those that are honest today. And raise their hand, God. There are too many to count. Hands in the air saying, I lost it and I, I need it. I'm willing to confess it. I got to grab it. I got to do something about it not going to change. God, I pray that you would show them, speak to them. God, through friends, Christian friends, godly friends, godly counsel, wise counsel, counseling. God, speak to them, show them, help them, equip them. Lord God, so tomorrow can be even better than today. So tomorrow can be even bigger than it was today. And I thank you, Lord. Thank you for this story. Thank you for your love. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I think we got baptisms today. I heard. Kind of excited about that. Some of you may need to, don't, don't leave just yet, please. Some of y'all may need to run, and we understand that. But I promise you, if you walk out there, I promise you two things. One, you'll feel the wind a little more. It'll pick up. But the second thing I promise you is you'll be blessed. I love this, man. Last year, God gave me this idea. We had done Polar Plunge before in Navarre. When we moved here, and uh, last year the, the Lord was like, hey, man, people do polar plunge. Why don't you do a polar plunge baptism? And we had five sign up last year, and ten got baptized. This year we got had ten sign up. We got 15 at least ready to be baptized. And I think, uh, I think it would just be right for all of us to celebrate that if you can.
Listen, if you're here today and you're not a Christian, you need Christ. The greatest day of your life is when you will take your trust for eternity and you will turn to Jesus for the answer. Not religion, not your goodness. You know, I wondered if it was you and I over coffee and I asked you if it was you in the casket, what would be next? And if you would say, I don't know, or if you'd like, I know and it wouldn't be good, then this moment is for you. You need Jesus as your Savior. He came for all. Not everyone's going to recognize that. Not everyone's going to receive it. But if you'll receive God, who gave his son, Jesus, who lived a perfect life, died a perfect death, they buried him three days later. He did what no one else has done by their own strength. He came back to life, risen, risen. And he's not just risen, he's coming again. And if you go to church and you're like, well, I'm this or I'm that, and it's not Jesus, you have missed it. We never like to end a gathering without giving you a chance to give your life to Christ. And I just wonder if there's anyone here today who you would be honest and say, if, if this was my last day, I don't know where I would go. I don't know what would happen to me. Maybe you're watching online right now. Maybe you're in Blackwater. And you say, that's me. If, if, if it was me, it was my last day. I don't know what eternity looks like. I can tell you how to know. If you'll confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you'll be saved. It's the gospel. It's the good news. Christ died for our sins. And then he rose again. And that life, that power, that resurrection is the same life, power, and resurrection that will make you new. Jesus said, I make all things new. If you're here today and you need that, take this opportunity. We were in Atlanta eating barbecue right before we left. And I got to witness to a 27-year-old lady who lives in Atlanta, Georgia. She was our waitress. She was one of the managers. She came to me, I was thanking her and just being nice to her. And she said, I've heard your voice before. I, I, I've heard your voice. Who are you? I was like, somebody looking for me? Like, who, what do you mean? Who am I? And... Uh, she said, I've heard, are you on TV? Are you on? I said, my friend was with me, a college student. She's like, yeah, he's a pastor. He's on TV. And um, none of that matters, right? And I said to her, I said, I said, are you a Christian? I, I don't know this woman from, I said, are you a Christian? And she said, no, I'm not a Christian. See, you know it when you're not, and you know it when you are. That's a different message for a different day. But she said, I'm not. She said, um. My mother was Catholic, so I was sprinkled as a baby, and my father's Muslim. And she said, I just don't know. Man, right there in that barbecue restaurant, I got to tell her there's a God in heaven who loves her and died for her and shed his blood for her, and he sees her, and he knows her, and he wants her. He wants to rescue her. He wants to take her from death to life. In fact, he is the way, the truth, and the life, and she was this close. And it's not my job, right? It's not my job to crank the arm. Uh, it's not my job to force her to pray a prayer. It was my job to tell her about Jesus. And she said, I'm, I'm close, but I'm not ready yet. I said, well, get ready. Don't take too long. And he'll be there waiting when, when you're ready. And I said, I'm going to be praying for you. Here's my number. Text me when you pray and ask Jesus to make you new. I believe there are people here today. You're in the same predicament of the, as that lady. You, you, you got religion, different sides of religion pulling you here and there, and your friend, your best friend, your neighbor, and your parents, and, and, your, and, and you don't know. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the truth. Jesus is the life. Call out to him and watch what he'll do. With heads bowed and eyes closed, I'm going to lead us in that prayer, and then we're going to close. God, I pray right now in this moment, I give it to you, and I pray for people that are here. I pray right now, Holy Spirit, you would open eyes for, for people who would say, well, I belong to this denomination, or I'm this, or I'm that, or I was born this, or I was born that. And the truth is, God, they're no more a Christian they, than the devil. They need you. They're not the devil, but they're no more a Christian than the devil. Lord, they, they need you. They, they, they don't need you to be a, a better person. They need you because they are dead in their sins. And they need you because you're life. Would you take the veils off their eyes right now? God, would you convict them? Because unless you draw them, they're none of yours. So would you draw them right now, Holy Spirit? 
And I pray today we would see hands raised. I pray today there would be people watching online that would cross the line of faith. I pray today there would be people in Blackwater, men in Blackwater, give their life to you. Let's pray together, church. You're not praying it to me or through me. We're praying it to God. Would you say out loud, would you say, God, I am a sinner. And you know it. And I know it. And I've blown it. And I need your love to rescue me from it. Thank you for loving me. Dying for me. You bled for me. And you rose again. And today, I declare Jesus is Lord. Forgive me of my sin. Come into my life. Make me new. Teach me how to live. Man, if you prayed that prayer, you're just as saved. You put your faith in Christ. You're just as saved as this preacher is. And that's a moment to celebrate. If you're watching online, let us know in the chat. Jesus made me new. We want to celebrate you. If you're here today and you did it, I'm going to ask you to raise your hand. We've got some friends. They're wearing a blue momentum t-shirt and they got a blue momentum bag. We want to give it to you because there's resources to help you before you leave. If that's you, raise that hand on the count of three. We're not going to embarrass you. We're going to celebrate you. Church, get ready to clap. Person, get ready to raise that hand on the count of three. Hold it up high. One, two, three. Right now, hold it up. Hold that hand up high. God bless you. God bless you. Hold it up. God bless you. God bless you watching online. Hold it up. Let us know, man. Let in the chat. You're at Blackwater. Hold the hand up. Let us know. God bless you.